Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn. I'm a professional colorist. I've been working with Resolve for many years now. And I want to show you some of my techniques on skin smoothing using a particular effect called Beauty. So let's go and take a look. Now, what the Beauty tool is doing is working on frequency separation. So again, it's quite similar to the Texture Pop tool that I described in the last episode, but it works a little bit different, uh, in especially in terms of if you're beginning and just starting out, there's a very good automatic mode. So this first mode that you come to is just called automatic, okay? And then there's an advanced mode here. So in automatic mode, what it's doing is it's predefining the correct frequency that would be generally with skin tone and it's putting a little bit of texture detail back in in the higher frequencies so that gives you the texture back in the skin tone so it doesn't look all plasticky so straight away i can go to the auto tools here and just slide up the amount so this is obviously the amount of smoothing if i go the other way this is coarsening so you've got smoothing and coarsening and then scale is obviously the amount of that so down here at zero we're literally switching the effect off and up here, we're putting it at full strength. So if I just tweak that a little bit, that's a little bit strong. In fact, if I press Shift and F, we can work in this nice full screen mode and still see our tools. And then we can just dial in a bit of beauty. So if I press Command and D, and there we go. Now, one thing you've got to be very careful of with the beauty tool is that it's not isolating skin, it's isolating lower frequencies or medium, mid, mid frequencies, okay, which is generally skin tone. So what you've got to be careful of is that the rest of your image is not getting smoothed at the same time. So let me show you, if I go to another clip, I've got this guy here, I've already applied beauty. So if I just show you the node tree very quickly, shift and F, so there's our exposure, there's our beauty. Uh, this is for something I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then this is our color space transform, just taking this from ARRI into Rec 709 color space. So on the beauty tool, I haven't done anything to it at all yet. So if I just go with Shift F, and what I'm gonna do is start adding some smoothness. Now, it's obviously preset in the automatic mode to um, work on skin tone and put me a little bit of texture back in automatically, but it's affecting everything in here. His suit's going, if I just switch it on and off, the door's going, the wallpaper's even going. So these are things with sort of medium to low frequency. So what we need to do generally when you're working with the beauty tool is to isolate the area that you want to work with. So that can either be a key or more general, how I use it is I would use a window. So let's just press Shift F again, go to our window tracker, and I'm literally just gonna draw around here his face. You can take a little bit more time than this. And I'm gonna track it. And so I've got the new tracking tool where you've just got this multi-directional arrow, so it doesn't matter where I am on my clip, I just press this once and it goes forwards and backwards automatically. So that's 17.4.1, uh, I'm on 17.4.2 has just been released, I've not actually installed it yet. There we go, so we've now got a track on the face and that should now stick, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my window, I'm gonna add a little bit of softness to that. And now what we're doing on the beauty tool is we're only working on the skin. So you can see that they're softening up. That's obviously a little bit harsh on there. So even in the automatic mode, I've got global blend here, which allows me to blend it back with the original image. So let's take a look at the advanced features in the Beauty OFX. So if I'm gonna go down here, switch to advanced, and you see we've got now smoothing and texture, but we are now defining what that is, whereas the automatic one was basically set for good skin tone. So the smoothing threshold up here, what this is doing to the right is obviously smoothing, to the left is coarsening. And diffuse lighting is a different way of doing that. It's a bit more like the mid-tone detail tool that you have. And you see, if I just move that, it just basically changes. It's not changing the lighting. It just looks like it's changing the lighting, but it's actually sort of playing around with, um, with the sort of contrast a little bit. So a combination of the two of these should get you pretty much where you want to be. So um, you see, I'm hardly moving these at all. These are really small moves. And what I can do then is look at the texture recovery because we're gonna pull some of that detail back. So texture threshold here. So this is preset to 0.4. So it has got a little bit of, of threshold already. I can preview that here. And the preview allows me to see how much texture we're bringing back. So remember texture is the higher frequencies. It's things like hair, it's pores, it's things like that. So we're just gonna bring our level up a little bit. I'm gonna switch that preview off and I'm gonna dial in. So obviously it's set to zero at the minute. So it's not actually bringing any texture back. And I can then just add texture back slowly here. So we get that really nice soft skin, but still with detail. The feature recovery is looking at the edges. So we can preview that. 
have a look what's there. So by default, there's nothing coming back at all. So there's nothing being recovered. But as I move this up, you'll see whatever's white will be included in the recovery amount. So there we go. So we've got the eyes and the lips, the main details coming back and switch that off and they're back. So if I, let me show you that with and without. And there you go. So a combination of these tools gets you in a really good place. And the global blend, of course, always blend back a little bit. I always, I always blend back something. Now there's another really good feature in here. It's called show split view. So what I'm gonna do is switch over to that. And what this is doing now is showing me, this is my smoothing. So it's just the amount of smoothing I've got. This here is my texture recovery. This down here is the feature recovery. And this is the final image. Now the reason you're seeing a little bit sneaking through there is because I've got my global blend on. So if I just pull that back, that clears that away. So I tend to take that off until the very end. That's the last thing that I put in. So now if I change my smoothing threshold, you see this one changes and the final result is changing. So it's just a quick and easy way to see what you're actually smoothing and what you're recovering. So now I'm gonna switch that off and I'm just gonna global blend back a little bit more. And there we go. Now, one thing with the beauty tool is it one, one setting doesn't fix everything, okay? So what I often do with beauty tool or face refine or whatever I'm working with is I would have more than just one node doing this. So in this instance, I want to do some work on her mouth here, but separate to the settings I've got here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Shift F, I'm gonna add another serial node, and I'm gonna add the beauty tool again. Okay, I could have just copied and pasted that one. And then I'm gonna go back to my advanced tools. I'm gonna to shift F so we can see full screen. And I'm now working on a second node. And in fact, what I want to do, I'm gonna undo that because what I actually want to do, I want to work in a parallel. And the reason for that is because I want to get the information from the lips from this node and not from this node. And I did a whole episode on parallels and how and why I use them. So be worth you checking it out. So I'm gonna add a parallel node. I'm gonna add the beauty tool. And before I do anything, I'm gonna isolate the lips. So what I'm gonna do is draw a window. Let me click on here. I'm gonna just zoom in here. So I'm just middle mouse clicking so that I can move around my window. And then I'm just gonna draw. And then obviously I'm gonna track that. And then obviously I'm gonna soften the window off because I always do. Okay, so now we'll go back to shift F mode and I'm gonna put that back to best fit. And I'm gonna to go to my advanced tools. And what we're gonna do now is just smooth off this, particularly the bottom lip here, but it's got a little bit of cracking. So it looks a little bit dry. So I'm just gonna see if I can smooth that off a bit. Let's bring our texture back in. Let me try some diffuse lighting on there as well. Yeah, that's actually helping with that sort of shine that she's got going around the outside of her lip. And I'm gonna add a little bit of texture back. And then I'm gonna blend that back and I'm going to press Command and D to see before and after. That's looking much better. That really is helping this little shine here as well. So the beauty tool is also available in the face refine tool. So why would I use it as a separate item here when I could just go to the face refine tool? Well, the main reason is, is that I can work anywhere I want on, on the face and I can even do it on maybe landscapes. I'm going to show you in a minute that beauty doesn't just work on skin. We can use it on landscapes, we can use it on textures, anything you like. So in the face refine tool, you are limited to the face because obviously the, the system analyzes facial features and that is what it works with. Now the face refine tool doesn't always follow the face exactly. Sometimes it can drift a little bit. So if you do eye lightening, for example, as the face refine tool just goes slightly off track, you then see the shape because it's coming off the eyes. So that's another reason why I like to just use the beauty tool sometimes to save me having to rely on tracking the faces. And if we go to this guy here, I've got a face refine already applied to this node here. And yes, yeah, so it's here in texture. Okay, and you can see here, you've got the operating mode, beauty and advanced. I did do a whole episode on the face refinement tool. So you might wanna check that out. It was for version 16 but the principles are very much the same. And you had the beauty tool in there as well. So in texture, the operating mode, beauty advanced, so that's in the advanced mode. You've also got the beauty automatic and you've even got just smoothing. So if you just wanted to take the smoothing operations out there, you can do that. So that's all in the face refinement tool. But if you wanna be able to create your own masks and just track, and it's much quicker, 
then just take the beauty tool. So it's not just skin smoothing that we want to do. I know this episode is about skin smoothing, but while I'm in the beauty tool, let me just show you that we can adjust landscapes just as well using the beauty tool. So I've got a regular clip here. This is black magic footage. And I've got my color space transform here, converting me to rec 709. A little bit of offset and some exposure work here. And then on the middle node here, we've got our beauty tool. So I've done nothing to it, but this time I'm gonna to go to the left. And you can see, let me press shift and F, that that is enhancing the texture in here. Look at the sky, it's looking really great. And that's just with the automatic mode, okay? And you can obviously set the degrees there, or you can still go in and fine tune that with all the advanced tools. So it really is a great tool for skin smoothing or coarsening if you want to do coarsening. It's great on landscapes. Think about using multiple nodes when you're doing skin softening. You might want to do separate work on uh, eye bags. You might want to do separate work on lips. It's a little bit easier to use than the face refine tool and doesn't take as long because it doesn't have to analyze the face to start with, which can take a little bit of time depending on your system. So I hope that helps you with your skin smoothing techniques. I managed to pass 30,000 subscribers last week. So thank you so much. I am so grateful for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscription, hit the notification bell, do all that sort of stuff. Drop me comments. Um, people wanted this. They wanted me to do more on open effects. So I have done. I'm going to do a few more as well. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.